In just a half a century, hip hop has gone from a counterculture to a driving force behind pop culture. The baggy jeans, flashy jewels, and blinged out nails that were once shunned by luxury brands are now being embraced. As we continue our Hip Hop at 50 series, our Mona Kosarabdi looks at the impact and evolution of hip hop fashion. On the runways of fashion's most luxurious houses, a familiar aesthetic. Baggy silhouettes, bomber jackets draped in logos, and athletic sneakers saunter down the catwalk, all marked by an undeniable swagger that's synonymous with hip hop. Everybody wants to be streetwear now. That's like the hip thing. If you're not streetwear, you're not cool. Today, the symbiosis between hip hop and luxury fashion is understandable, often referenced in song lyrics. Amigos, for example, with Versace, Versace, Versace. It's the parent why luxury houses now lean into the admiration from artists, but the embrace from high-end brands was painfully slow. When we first started hip-hop, and those fashion houses wanted nothing to do with hip-hop. They kind of shunned hip-hop. Back in the days when we were doing the baggy look and stuff like that, and some more of like an inner-city look, it's called urban. In other words, probably saying black people clothing, right? When hip hop first started and you had iconic looks from like Run DMC and Salt and Peppa and LL Cool J, they really were like the first people on the ground like who really had the music and but the fashion as well. Everyone wanted a Kangol hat because LL Cool J had a Kangol hat. Everyone wanted an Adidas tracksuit because Run DMC had an Adidas tracksuit. Aaliyah's look today is still known. Every girl knows you wear a baggy bottom and a small crop top. That look is still popular to this day. Oh, you think back to Queen Latifah and what she was serving us when she first came out and with her UNITY look. And then with little Kim coming out and women embracing their sexy and feeling confident to not be afraid to embrace their sexuality. In the late 80s, Run DMC released the record My Adidas, an ode to the three-stripe shell toe sneaker that they specifically wore without laces. The hit, catching the attention of Adidas executives who all of a sudden noticed a spike in sales, spawning the first partnership of its kind. By the 90s, hip hop was in its golden age, opening up opportunities outside of music. Hip hop needed a, a, a fashion designer to dress those artists when they were coming out, because there was no other fashion houses that paid attention to hip hop. This right here was our first newspaper print design that we did back in 1995. That's Carl Kanai, universally Carl deemed Kanai. the godfather of urban streetwear. Bam. His eponymous clothing line set the stage for the birth of street fashion. To have every top icon in the 90s wear our brand from, you know, P. Diddy, Tupac, Nas, Aaliyah, Michael Jackson, Biggie Smalls, Pete Roxiel Smooth. We knew what they wanted. No one else had our fit. No one else had our colors. No one else had the nostalgia and the signature logo that we had. It was just something so different and so unique that it gravitated to the artists and we gravitated back to them. Carl became the blueprint for the many brands that would follow. You had a lot of amazing brands that were birthed out of hip hop from Kooji to FUBU to Sean John to Rock Aware to Baby Fat to Fat Farm. And with the money flowing, rappers were buying it all in abundance. Everybody trying to outdo the next person. It's high school. Oh, yeah. That's what hip hop fashion is. D Rock and Kane from the iconic duo, the Yin Yang Twins, remember how they spent their first paycheck? Clothes, shoes, yeah. jewelry, goals, chains. When a rapper get his first check, he oh, goes yeah. shopping and say, I want that, I want that. Yeah. He's going by everything you never could buy. That includes the most valuable diamonds that money can buy. Bling, bling. <laughs> Vicky Toback captured its importance in her book, Ice Cold, A Hip-Hop Jewelry History. So in the beginning, when it was really still like a community subculture from the Bronx, um, the jewelry was a lot simpler. The jewelry is really, you know, these layered gold chains. And then if you follow the progression, you know, of when hip hop steps into its power, when labels start forming, the stakes get bigger and bigger. And so do the chains. It was playful, you know, like a Rubik's Cube or different, just different spins. You saw Gucci Mane with, you know, his Bart Simpson chain, which, you know, I think kind of like blew a lot of people's minds. The first um, introduction for me into jewelry was when I saw 50 Cent wearing his jewelry and his cross on the cover of um, Get Rich or Die Trying. 
Just a kid in Toronto then, Alex Moss was already becoming a student of the game. Starting his company during the pandemic, at 30 years old, Moss has already designed for some of the biggest names in rap. Drake, ASAP Rocky, Tyler the Creator, Jack Harlow, Chief Keef, Trippy Red, Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, um, Playboy Cardi. The originality part of it, right? The uniqueness is really important. Exactly. We never make the same thing twice, so I'll never, I won't even do a little iteration of something else. A one of a kind, like this diamond necklace he created for Drake that represents 42 engagement rings. This is a custom piece over here. Yes, it is. This one's actually for Geno Smith. He's okay. a quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. I just recently made it for him. What does something like that cost? Something like this? Yes. Priceless. While giving ASAP Rocky an update on a custom piece Moss had completed for him. The grenade we've been working on is almost ready. Almost. Ready. Almost. Yeah. Almost ready. I'm excited. I, I might be more excited than you, bro. We talked to ASAP about how he pushes the boundaries when it comes to his personal style, like swapping diamonds for pearls. I love to play with the lines of, you know. The gender norms. I love exploring that, and that's where I feel most comfortable. You know, doing the things that they say, you know, is unorthodox to you, like, you know, unorthodox or right or wrong or incorrect, politically correct. I, I just don't care. I like to blur the lines, and I'm very daring. And what looks good looks good, right? Now, it's not just the men. The spectacular opulence also attracting the women in hip-hop, who from the beginning were drawn to a similar aesthetic. Back in the day, you know, women were sort of limited in their jewelry choices. It was either, you know, the big earrings or like a dookie rope, just like the guys. But now you see, you know, these powerhouse women like Cardi B, like Ice Spice, like Beyonce. I mean, Beyonce, they all are our Elizabeth Taylors of today. Like they are collecting on a level where they understand generational wealth. They understand quality. The ladies aren't afraid to push the limits with jewelry and definitely not with their nails. So these are the nail station. The it's here in the Bronx we met one of the biggest nail artists in hip hop, the woman behind Cardi B's blinding claws. I'm Jenny Bowie. I'm the queen of bling. Jenny remembers when she did Cardi's nails nearly a decade ago. Woo! She's, she's so exciting about my nail. You know, she... She never had bling before. Artists are drawn to her blinding style, born out of her humble beginnings, fleeing war-torn Cambodia. I come from the poor country. You know, in the poor country, you don't have money to buy the diamond. When you wear my nail, you don't have to wear jewelry. You just get up and go. <laughs> she loves me, yo. My nail lady loves me. Years later, Cardi, Big Frida, Frida. Pull up on Jenny. and other influencers making the trek to the Bronx. Even now, she still comes to the Bronx sometimes. But nobody knows she can because she's in my private room. Yeah. Whether it's the Swarovski bling on Cardi B or the elaborate cartoons on Megan Thee Stallion, each set tells a story. Today, hip hop continues to spawn opportunities for the tastemakers and trendsetters associated with the craft. It's given us the late Virgil Abloh, who left an indelible mark on luxury fashion and paved the way for his successor, Pharrell Williams, who as a newly appointed men's creative director of Louis Vuitton, debuted his first collection in Paris this month. Hip hop is really such a global dominating business. I don't think anyone who was around when hip hop first started saw that coming. 50 years later, the power of the fan base, the dollar and the demand, undeniable. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.